times negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Oop, I almost forgot. This is down also. It should be negative. I keep forgetting that. All right. Since the ball goes down 0.85 meters and down is negative, we should have that there. And that makes everything turn out nice, doesn't it? Because you can't take the square root of a negative. The negatives now cancel. So you're going to say 2 times, you're going to take say the square root of 2 times 0.85 meters over 9.8 meters per second squared. You're going to do that. All right, so now you stick that in your calculator and see if you come up with this. Make sure you actually can do it in your calculator properly because I do have trouble sometimes with, uh, maybe not so much in this case, but I do have trouble a lot of times with people um, not understanding proper order of operations on the calculator, where to use the parenthesis and where not to. So it would behoove you to put that in your calculator and double check that you get that. And you should get 0.42 seconds, although actually that's not the answer, so why am I boxing it in? Duh. All right, so let's just kind of get rid of the box. But we're going to put it over here now. And since that's the time the vertical motion took place in, that's also the amount of time it had to travel outward in. Now, an interesting thing I want you to think about. What actually controls the time for a projectile? Well, it's the vertical motion, because think about it. Once the object hits the ground, that's when the horizontal motion stops too. So the time it takes it to come down is the only time it has to travel outward. So the vertical motion actually controls the time the projectile is in the air. As soon as it accelerates to the ground and strikes the ground, both motions stop. So the vertical motion controls the time that it has to travel outward. Now, so we've got the time. Now we can go to the horizontal side and we can say, oh, dx equals v sub o x times t. We don't need the 1 half a t squared part because it's zero. And we get dx equals 0.88 meters per second times, ah, 0.42 seconds. And if you stick that in your calculator, the seconds cancel. You're going to get left with meters. You should get 0.37 meters. Check it out for yourself. So, good rule of thumb. Once you filled in the inferred information and you've identified correctly, it does help, the information in numerical form that's in the problem, always start on the side where you have the most information. Now, sometimes that may be on the vertical side. Sometimes it might be on the horizontal side. Always start where you have the most information to help you find the unknown. Okay? All right. I'll leave it to you to try the assignment. Okay? Bye-bye.